Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster and welcome back to my beginner's guide to wood carving series. Now this is probably going to be the last episode before we actually start a couple of little projects to make something. Um, and what I want to talk about today is storing and preserving both um, normal wood that you've harvested and projects that you're in the middle of as well. Um, now this really only applies to green wood. If you're using seasoned or you know shop bought timber that's already dry, you don't need really to worry about it. Um, so as I say, this is really just about green wood. Um, now what do I mean by green wood? That essentially it's fresh wood, wood that's been recently harvested uh, that still has a lot of moisture content in it. Um, now it's really good for carving because it, it, it helps your knife cut up it's easier to cut with your knife, it's much more forgiving, um, tends not to split so much. Um, the downside is that as it dries, as the moisture escapes, um, if you're not careful, the moisture can force its way through the wood and cause splits and cracks. Um, and especially if you've roughed out something like this, like a little spoon, if it's still uh, very, very damp, as it dries out, you can just get it cracking in half, which is obviously what you want to avoid. Um, so firstly, I'm going to start off with harvested wood. So I've got a little stick here and a slightly thicker branch, and this applies really to anything all the way up to kind of quite large sort of trunks and things like that. Um, now this isn't actually that damp. Um, I've had this for a while. It has dried out quite a bit, but let's just assume that I cut this fresh today. Now that you've got a few options in terms of preserving it and keeping the moisture in, which a lot of people like to do because they like to keep it green as long as possible, uh, as I said earlier, because it makes it easier to carve. Now, there are some people that will say you need to paint the ends with a latex base paint or with wax or something along those lines. Um, and these, these methods do work. I'm not a personal fan of them. I find them a bit messy, a bit time consuming. But if that's all you've got available, then that will absolutely work to a degree. I mean, none of these methods are foolproof. Um, so you just need to bear in mind that unfortunately splitting and cracking is part and parcel of working with green wood. Um, and really all you can do is your best to try and limit that from happening. Um, now what I would do with something like this, and this goes up to kind of, you know, things of this kind of big and even bigger, is once it's freshly cut, I will put it inside either a plastic bag or a plastic box or container of some description. Um, and what I will do is seal that probably 90% of the way. So if, if I put this inside a plastic bag, I will scrunch up the top, have a very, very small opening at the end, just to allow some of the moisture to escape. And I'll normally have that facing upwards um, because kind of condensation and just general airflow will have that work working that way. Um, and that's what I would do to keep this green for as long as possible works the same way with smaller things like this um, and the only downside of that is you do need to remember to air it out once in a while if you don't what will happen is the moisture that gets trapped inside the bag that slowly releases through the small hole at the top will begin to um, sort of saturate the piece of wood and you get things like mold and bacteria build up and if you leave it too long the wood would the wood will just go rotten. Um, I still find it the best method and the most reliable, certainly for me, um, and I normally have two or three plastic, um, either carrier bags or bin liner style bags out in my workshop, and once a week or so, I'll come out and I'll take everything out, let it sort of dry off naturally in the air, and then replace it into a fresh plastic bag. Um, what I also do is turn the original bag inside out to allow the moisture to evaporate off that as well. So that's how I deal with freshly cut wood. Um, but what about a project that I'm working on? So you take this spoon, for example, I've got a little coffee scoop here, um, and I've got a bowl. Now all of these are actually dry, so I'm just using them for an example. Um, but this is the kind of thing, if I was making a bowl, let's take a big, bigger project, this, this kind of bowl is something that I make fairly regularly, um, and this is kind of where I'll try and get it to within my first one or two carving sessions. Um, and you can actually see, really good example actually, I hadn't noticed this, there is a crack down here and a corresponding crack along here. Um, and that is where this has dried out a little bit too quickly. Um, now this is perfectly salvageable, there's things I can do with this, um, but generally speaking what I will do is I will carve this as far as I'm going to go in one session, I will take some of the wood chips, the fresh wood chips that I've carved out of this, put it in the bottom of a plastic bag, put this on top, seal the bag up most of the way and just leave it in my workshop for a few days until I next carve or for a week and then I'll change the bag over and what have you. Um, now I find that works really really well um, with pieces like this and spoons and other things 
Um, you need to pay a lot more attention to making sure you change the bags regularly because you don't, even if you do get mould on this, I mean, you can wipe it off, you can carve it off, um, but you know, ideally you want to avoid it in the first place. Um, and really, that is my trick, that's my tip for storing wood. Um, it works with things like this, so this is just a, a quarter or possibly an eighth of a, of a log that I split down. Um, as I say, this is, this is fully seasoned now, but if it wasn't, um, and if I was going to be making lots of spoons over the course of a weekend, I'd take the logs, split them down like this, and I would keep a bunch of these in plastic bags just to retain some of that moisture. Um, when I then work it down into spoon uh, blanks like this and kind of, you know, almost finished spoons ready for kind of finishing cuts and sanding, I will leave them in those bags um, with the wood chipping. Sometimes I might take a few off cuts of wood so that it's not sitting directly on the damp chippings, um, especially if I've reached this kind of stage. Um, and I'll leave a little bit of a larger hole in the top of the bag. Um, and generally speaking, you know, you always have to sacrifice a few spoons to the gods of carving, but generally speaking, most of them will survive, at least in my experience anyway. Um, so that's just, a bit, I wanted this to be a really quick episode, and really this was just something for new carvers and for people that aren't familiar with this. You know, don't leave things out in your workshop like this. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention, and this is really quite important, um, is don't keep fresh wood inside your house unless you can absolutely not avoid it. Um, the reason being is the temperatures and the humidity within your house will cause any kind of wood to um, dry out and season a lot quicker than it would do in an outdoor environment like my workshop. Um, and that's really what you want to avoid. You're, trying to, you're not trying to stop it drying out, you're trying to control how quickly it happens um, and hopefully prevent the, uh, the moisture from escaping so quickly that it's forcing its way past the fibres of the wood um, and causing it to split. Likewise, I've seen people try to dry out almost finished spoons in the oven and microwaves and things like that. Um, something I personally don't recommend because it is the, one of the quickest surefire ways I know of, of ruining your spoon. Um, what you can do and what I do advocate is that if you have a fully finished spoon that you know has completely dried out, um, you, know, you can get moisture meters and things like that, but you know if you've been doing it for a while, you know you can sort of tell by eye and feel and noise and that kind of thing. Um, and what I'll normally do is put a spoon for about a minute in a moderately warm oven before taking it out and putting on an oil finish because warming the spoon up will help um, the oil to absorb. You can leave it outside on, on a, on a, in your garden or something like that in the, in the direct sunlight, same thing, but make sure it's fully dried first. So anyway, those, that's just my really quick tip for today. Hope it was useful. Comments and questions in the box below. Hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I hope you'll all join me next time. Cheers, guys.